What's up, folks? This is a usual Christian with the usual Christian video. I wanted to bring up a topic that is the most provocative right now globally, the hot issue, and that is, of course, the issue with the LGBTQ and the feminism. As you all know that the issue is on the news and social media almost every single day, and without the topic, conversations cannot be made. This is a global issue, and as I'm speaking right now, I just encountered a news about the Miss Spain, Angela Ponce, who became the first transgender to perform in the Miss Universe. However, I'm just going to stick with LGBTQ. I would love to include the topic of transgenderism into the discussion, but because of its special characteristic, we will discuss about it in a different video. It's not really homosexuality, I guess. Like... Also, feminism cannot be excluded when we talk about homosexuality. The two categories are like one whole meal or a combo menu because these movements go together, apparently. But technically speaking, they are two fundamentally different topics, so I will approach them separately. And of course, I want to save the topic for another video to upload as well. Now, today's question is, is homosexuality a sin? It should not just end there. But we got to also ask ourselves then, what is the proper action or, or stance that the church or Christians should take? What is the right thing to say or do? And what does the Bible say? You know, let's find out. So let's first define homosexuality. According to Merriam-Webster, hom or homo, one means one and the same. So when we say homosexual, it means same sex and thus same sexual attraction or some same sexual intercourse. So I'm letting you know in advance that I have no intention to denunciate such individuals or marginalize any of you by calling it homosexual. I'm simply trying to make it easy for me to call them, like calling Michelangelo simply Mike. Likewise, instead of calling them LGBTQ and so on, let's just stick with homosexuality. So is homosexuality a sin? To answer this, we gotta also define sin as well. What is a sin? According to Google, which has about 3 billion results on sin, it's an immoral act considered to be a transgression against divine law. What is transgression? It seems that the word is trans and aggression combined. Yes, yeah, so again, according to where Merriam-Webster, trans means on or to the other side of, or across or beyond, or it means to change or transfer. Aggression means hostile or violent behavior or attitude towards another. So therefore, sin has this notion of crossing over a line that should not be crossed. And that makes sense because in Greek, the sin is hamartia, which means missing the mark or off the mark, like as an arrow is off the bullseye where it's supposed to be. So is being gay or lesbian transgressing against the divine law? The divine law regarding sexuality in the Bible is so obvious that I'm gonna quickly move forward. Yes, a male has to be with a female, and a female has to be with a male. The most manifest trait of it is the biological aspect of it. Humans cannot reproduce when they go through same-sex sexual intercourse. Let's check out the Bible. What does the Bible say? Let's check out Genesis chapter 19, for example. Like Sodom and Gomorrah, the famous story. It's a very famous region, Sodom. In fact, it has become so famously associated with homosexual conduct that its name was for many years a byword for it. Like sodomy equals homosexuality. But it's sodomy really what Sodom is about. The account describes the men of the city attempting to forcibly have sex with two angelic visitors to the city who have appeared in the form of men, so which means both human and male. Later parts of the Old Testament accuse Sodom of a range of sins, oppression, adultery, lying, abetting criminals, arrogance, complacency, and indifference to the poor. None of these even mentions homosexual conduct. This has led some people to wonder if we have read homosexuality into the Genesis narrative, when in fact the real issue was social oppression and injustice. But take a closer look at the text, and it is clear that homosexuality was in fact involved. Although the Hebrew word for no, which is yada, can just mean to get to know someone, rather than to know them sexually. 
it is clear from the crowd's aggression and Lot's dreadful attempt at offering them this daughter and as an alternative that they are looking for much more than a simple greeting. I mean, nobody gets so so upset as a crowd, like. Like, oh, I, we have to greet each other and socialize. <laughs> Nobody does that. Hence what happens next, the angels warn Lot that judgment is imminent. In the New Testament, Jude adds an important insight. Just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities, which likewise indulged in sexual immorality and pursuit of natural desires, serve as an example by undergoing a punishment of eternal fire. That's Jude 7. What happened at Sodom? is clearly meant to be something of a cautionary tale. Jude makes it clear that it's their ungodliness involved sexual immorality. They were punished for sexual sin along with the other sins of which they were guilty. Jude also highlights the nature of their sexual desires. They pursued unnatural desire, literally unnatural flesh. Some have suggested that this relates to the fact that the visitors to the city were angelic. Jude references angelic sin earlier in his letter, but these angels appeared as men, as mentioned earlier, a human and male. And the Bane crowd outside Lot's house showed no evidence of knowing they were angelic, so they didn't know. Their desire was to have sex with the men staying with Lot. In other words, it was a homosexual nature in their desires. They sure as hell were Burn it hot with sexual desire to be like that. <sighs> Let me have sex with him. Let's look at Leviticus. Chapter 18, verse 22. You shall not lie with a man as with a woman. It is an abomination. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22. If a man lies with a male as with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood is upon them. Leviticus chapter 20 verse 13. These verses from Leviticus are more cut to the point. Yes, according to the scriptures, it is a sin to be gay or lesbian. And according to Leviticus, yes, they are subject to death penalty. Good luck, gay people. <laughs> I'm just playing. So fortunately, the story doesn't just end here. Thank you, Jesus, right? Is it just homosexuality that is the sin that people who commit such sin should die? It says in Romans chapter 6 verse 23, the wages of sin is death. In Romans chapter 3 verse 10, there is no one righteous, not even one. Also in Romans chapter 3 verse 23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Paul is saying that everyone who sinned, which means everyone, should be put to death. You might think, um, I'm not gay and I'm not lesbian. No, you may be not, but you may be a murderer, liar thief, adulterer, hater, or you may be arrogant. Jesus even goes deeper about it. In Matthew 5, 27 to 28, Jesus says, you have heard that it was said you shall not commit adultery, but I tell you that everyone who looks at a woman lustfully and has already committed adultery with her in his heart, likewise, if you have murdered, hated, stole in your heart, you are a sinner. In fact, all of our act of transgression derives from our sinful heart. There is no escape from this. Jesus so wise that he placed such inescapable spectrum of sin that no one can escape. Jesus indicates your sin to be equal to the sin of homosexuality. So you and I are subject to death penalty. But how lucky are we? Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 to 5 it says, Because of his great love for us, God who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. I always thought those unreasonably angry people with such an offensive messages written on their picket sign were irrational. Yes, it is a sin to be homosexual according to the Bible, but does the Bible also teach us to be hostile and act in violent manner towards others? No way. Jesus never taught his disciples and us to be hostile. Instead, he commanded us to love our neighbors and thus our enemies. Going around spreading hate is definitely not what Jesus told us to do. He even says in Matthew 5.39, Do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them to the other cheek also. But instead, Christians get out of their way to go and slap people around. Let's conclude this. Is homosexuality a sin? Yes, but it's one of the sins people commit.
You are not doomed if you're gay. What should you do as Christians or church? Welcome them. If you can't meet Jesus, so can they. If you can't welcome them, just do nothing at least. Just shut up. Paul is saying this to you. Romans chapter 2 verse 1. You who pass judgment on someone else, for at whatever point you judge another, you are condemning yourself because you who pass judgment do the same things. Message for gay folks, repent and turn to Jesus wholeheartedly. Message to Christians, don't spread hate. Spread love, folks, and press subscribe and comment below if you want to share your thoughts.